So Huiqi, I want to tell you about LLVM today. Okay. What is LLVM? LLVM is is a compiler infrastructure. Um, what is a compiler? Oh, let me share my screen. Yes. Okay, that's, a good idea. That, that's a good idea. So this is the LLVM webpage. It's LLVM.org. Traditionally, a compiler is what you would use in order to make a programming language work. Is it like a parser to just parse the language and then generates the AST? Yes, uh, almost. It parses the language and generates the AST, but then there's more. You and I have worked a little bit with AST. We built some calculation evaluator libraries, right? That, yeah. that dealt with ASTs. If this is the compiler and you're feeding code into the compiler, uh, the first step of the compiler is the parser. Okay. So you, you're taking this code and giving it to the parser. The parser gives you an AST. Okay. Which stands for abstract syntax tree. It, it's a representation of the syntax within the code that the, the user of the language wrote, right? Okay. Um, and to, to give a more concrete example, uh, I like to go to Esprima. Esprima is a very good JavaScript parser that's mm -hmm. also written in JavaScript itself. Mm -hmm. so, so here you can use their demo sandbox thing. You can write any JavaScript here and you get the AST of the, that JavaScript on the right hand side here. Mm -hmm. So for example, this line of JavaScript that has a variable declaration equal to some calculation mm -hmm. that is represented by this JavaScript structure which is the AST. Mm -hmm. um, so right. Uh, so this is this is a statement of what this code is. Right? At mm -hmm. the top level, what is it? It's a program. Okay. A program has a body which consists of statements, and each statement is represented as an object that has mm -hmm. a type. So this is a statement type of variable declaration and variable declaration in JavaScript can have multiple declarations all on one line, right? They can mm -hmm. just answer equals this comma, another thing equals another thing. Yeah. Uh, but this one just has one of those. So that's why you have an array here. And mm -hmm. then the, the variable declarator is a, we're assigning to the identifier of answer and then the init is the initial value of that we're assigning to it. And mm -hmm. what's the initial value? Well, it's a binary expression. It's multiplying six to seven, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this is the AST. This is what an AST looks like. Um, oh, you also need a evaluator to handle AST. Yes, yes, yes. Except uh, uh, you have written a bunch of evaluators, right, for the AST. Okay. Um, yep. Uh, so for binary expressions like plus, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and more, and function calls and what whatnot. Uh, but but for a compiler, you don't write an evaluator as the next step. For a compiler, mm. you write a code generator. Okay. What is a code generator? <laughs> Good question. The job of a code generator is to convert an AST to, uh, it's going to give you machine code. Um, machine code, what, what, what the heck is machine code? Well, machine code is code, it's binary code, like all in ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. um, the machine code is not that different conceptually from the code that you're writing. It is still doing instructions line by line, mm -hmm. instruction by instruction. But machine code is code that your CPU directly understands. Like your CPU is this chip inside your computer, right? Mm -hmm. And this this CPU uh, usually is you know has the Intel label on it usually, not necessarily. That th there's other companies that make CPUs as well, uh, but this machine code is going to go into your CPU directly. The CPU understands the instructions in the machine code. It'll go through the code line by line, just execute it, and that will give you the result, m more or less. It's slightly more complicated than that, but more or less, the CPU actually runs the code and gives you the result. So the code generator 
its job is to take this AST that's generated by parsing your code and generate a code in a language that your CPU can directly understand. Basically ones and zeros. Like. Yes, it is, it's, it's based on ones and zeros, but, but to make it a little more concrete for you, I can give you an idea of what machine code looks like. Um, so if you have a C program, like, like you write, now JavaScript is, JavaScript is not a compiled language. Uh, I, I'll talk maybe a little bit later about what, how JavaScript works internally. JavaScript is more of a dynamic program language, so it's slightly more complicated. But let's talk about how C works because the architecture of C mirrors more this picture I'm drawing, okay? Um, so if you take a C program like this, that does a calculation prints out the answer, mm -hmm. you compile it using the C compiler, then it will generate this binary file, which cannot be displayed in this editor because it's binary. <laughs> but uh, you, you, can, you can use a hex editor to look at it. I have a hex editor that's called hex fiend. Uh, you can download it, this is free. So if you use a hex editor to look at the binary code, it, it kind of looks like this. But I'm not gonna try to explain what's in there because I don't understand myself that much how to read the binary instructions. Uh, instead, I'll show you this format of code, okay? Th this is called assembly code. Okay. This is called assembly code other than zeros and ones. This is the lowest, lowest level programming language you're going to encounter. Mm -hmm. Assembly code is basically a representation of machine code that is just a little bit more uh, human readable. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the, usually the instruction names are three or four characters long. So this mm -hmm. is move L. And the, and the uh, all prints of the instruction is, is a list like this, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can think of these maybe as function calls, but we, we call them instructions. Um, and so everything basically that the CPU can do, there's a corresponding instruction and each instruction has like a prescribed list of arguments that it's able to accept and has to be in a certain format for that instruction, mm -hmm. right? When, when you translate this code into actually ones and zeros, Mm -hmm. It actually translates the name of the instruction into a particular numeric code in binary. And then the, the mm -hmm. values for all the all brands, it also translates those into numeric codes as well. And then just line up the ones and zeros one after another. Mm -hmm. so, so that's how it works. And the, there's a program that translates this program into ones and zeros. And that program is called an assembler. Okay. And back in the day, when the programmers that were working for Steve Jobs and Bill Gates at the early computing days, they, they would have to write code that's exactly like this. Um, that's basically what your code generator has to do, is to generate the ones and zeros. Uh, if you want to make life a little easier for you, then you, as, you generate an assembly language program like this and then let the assembler take the next step and, and turn it into the ones and zeros, right? So for example, if you write in C, does it go to assembly language and then it goes to the ones and zeros or it directly goes to ones and zeros? I, I think it goes, into, it goes into this format first. Inside here, takes it into assembly language first and then takes it into the machine code. Um, so we talked about what a compiler is. How does LLVM fit into that picture? Well, LLVM has a core, which you can use some of the pieces from the LLVM core as building blocks of your own compiler. So if you want to build your own programming language, you can like use some of the pieces that LLVM provides. Oh, okay. and, and, and I'll explain which pieces there are. Actually, <laughs> it has all of the pieces. And Clang, Clang is a C compiler that the LLVM project provides. Before LLVM came along, there was already a very widely popular C compiler that is free and open source. It was called GCC, right? 
GNU C compiler, and it was very good and it's very popular. M many, many open source projects used it. Clang is a newcomer, and its aim is to be better than GCC. Uh, it's, it's aiming to be uh, amazingly fast compiles, uh, better error messages, and good platform pro for providing source level tools, as in like you can build developer tools on top of this stuff easily. So Clang is one of the components of the LLVM project, which is an entire C compiler. It, it, it has everything that my picture has. Clang, Clang does it for the C programming language, the C++ programming language, and the Objective-C programming language. So does Clang use the, the core library, like the pieces? Yes, Clang uses LLVM core. Clang, in, in a sense, Clang is like a proof of concept of the LLVM core. It's saying, see, we can make a really awesome compiler using the LLVM core, and this is the proof, is Clang, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so Clang is a big part of the LLVM project, and Clang is so good and so fast. The machine code it generates is very optimized, as in when Clang generates machine code, that machine code usually runs quite a bit faster than the machine code that GCC generates. Mm -hmm. that, at least that's what I heard. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't write C code at my day job. That's kind of what I heard from the wild. We have this generator and we have the parser, right? Mm -hmm. They handshake via this format called the AST. That's their communication point. So I've been working through this tutorial, which is called My First Language Frontend with LLVM Tutorial. Mm -hmm. um, and the code is in C++, so it, it's, it's a bit of a learning curve for me. But you might be wondering, why, why do they call it frontend? <laughs> um, when, when they say frontend, they're not talking about like a user interface frontend, mm -hmm. right? But when, in, in, in compiler terms, the front end is, is this guy. Oh, okay. And uh, this guy is the back end. Oh, okay. Um, and the reason that this tutorial says, uh, well, I'm going to teach you how to build a programming language front end is because you're actually going to outsource the back end to LLVM. Oh. Because one of the building blocks that the LLVM project provides is the back end. That's the LLVM uh, assembler or LLVM compiler. So I, I believe that's called the LLC, the LLVM compiler. So, so does that mean you need an AST that it can handle and then it will just generate the machine? Yeah, yeah that, that's a great question. Yes, exactly. So if you're going to say, oh, we're, we're just going to use LLVM for our backend, so that we don't have a backend. It's sort of like when you're web developers, they're like, I don't even want to build a backend. I'm just going to use Firebase or something. Fair this point. is exactly what you're doing. Like, I, I want to make a programming language. I don't even want to write a backend because that's too hard. I don't want to know how machine code works. I'm just going to bring in a backend, and that's LLVM compiler. So, like, what, what is this? How do I talk to the LLVM backend? That's a good question. The answer is, we still have our parser that we need to build because that's the front end. So mm -hmm. code, code, again, code goes in here. We still have our AST of our language. You have to still have to just define what your AST format is. That's all you. Uh, oh. But And actually, we still have to write a generator. Generator number one is going to spit out some code in the format of LLVM IR. What is that? IR, IR means intermediate representation. Uh, what does LLVM stand for, by the way? Uh, on their website, they say LLVM does not stand for anything. It's not an acronym for anything, <laughs> which is a weird statement. It, it, it's kind of like, a, I think, an NPM, they say, NPM does not stand for Node Package Manager. That's not what it stands for. And then they just give you like a random acronym. Have you seen that on NPM? Yeah. It's pretty funny, right? Um, right. right. Uh, but LLVM project, they, they take the same stance. They're like, no, LLVM doesn't stand for anything. But I, I actually think LLVM has a, 
it actually stands for something. I think it stands for low level virtual machine, even though the authors don't want to admit it. Okay, so so basically you you still have to write this parser and you, you're gonna need to write a generator number one that generates a some some code in a language that LLVM can understand. And once you do that, you you send it through the LLVM compiler, which is called LLC or LLAS. I don't know which is the more correct term. And and then that gives you machine code. So so that's how that works. Uh, now what 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 does this guy look like? Uh, it, it's a full blown language. I, I'll show you a little bit of that to give you a taste. But okay. but this is this is essentially what's happening. Uh, and the reason I wrote generator number one here is because in a sense this guy is generator number two, right? Oh okay. So so we added another intermediate step. You can look yeah. at assembly code as yet another intermediate step. <laughs> okay. So there's many, many intermediate steps. Uh, why is this a good idea to use LLVM as the backend of your programming language? The biggest benefit is probably that LLVM has done the hard work of generating machine code for a variety of brands of CPUs. So, uh, so if, if you just know how to generate code in the LLVM IR format, now you can support Intel CPUs, and ARM CPUs and Spark CPUs and any other CPUs that the LLVM project can support. Does it optimize your code for you or it would just do whatever your code does or it, does it do some optimization internally? Yes, it does do optimization internally and it, it that's, that's a forte of LLVM. LLVM is really good at optimization. Okay. And and that's actually, that's the second reason that you would want to use LLVM instead of writing the code generator completely yourself.